Black Brother, Black Brother by Jewel Parker Rhodes. Chapter 7, Making Plans. Soon as I hear the door opening, I run to the hall. Trey, I've been waiting for you. Thought you were mad at me. Nah, not mad. I press my lips. Okay, I was mad, but I'm not mad anymore. I need your help. Trey's eyebrows arch just like Dad's. He stands tall, a foot taller than me. His gym bag swings from his arm, stinking up the hall. I let you down, Trey's face drops. I'm sorry. I should have known you were innocent. I don't want to go back to that moment, to that hurt. It's okay, I say, then whisper fiercely. I want to beat Alan. Make him take it back. Trey high fives me. That's what I'm talking about. Glue in his jock strap. Flood his locker. Dump his fencing gear in the pool. Can you imagine? See his face? Trey grins, rubs his hand together. King Alan embarrassed. No, not just embarrassed, I say, serious, my voice still low. Humiliated, like he humiliated me. Trey's face stills. Mom and Dad won't like this. Yeah, I know, I keep whispering, even though Mom and Dad aren't home. I know I should turn the other cheek, be stronger, be the better man. Payback. Trey could always tell what I was thinking. Yeah, payback, for real. Trey drops his bag, moving toward the kitchen. I need something to eat. I can't help but smile. Trey grows like a giant. After practice, he drinks a half gallon of milk, chews three ham sandwiches, but when he's worried, he eats even more. In the kitchen, I start slathering whole wheat bread with mayonnaise. Wish I could sue Alan. Sue all prejudiced people, because what Alan thinks, he makes other people think too. So I'm suspended, going before a judge. Middlefield says I'm a delinquent. Mom's going to fix it, says Trey, too quickly. I can tell he's as worried as me. It isn't fair, my fist clenches. I'm heated, losing control. Zero tolerance, I rage. Means harsh punishment for almost anything, Mom explained. Taking, talking back in school, carrying a cell phone, refusing to go to the office, slamming a backpack. A snowball going back to Alan. He should feel what he makes me feel, I shout, small and hated. I smash the sandwich. Mayonnaise oozes. Trey's smart. People smart. He knows what I'm about to cry. There's nothing wrong with you. Trey stares steadily at me. I lower my eyes first. I hate how Alan and the whole school makes me doubt me. Trey grabs another slice of bread. Maybe I should put some lettuce on this? He looks at me, then shakes his head. Nah. Tomatoes? Nope. Extra mayo, he dips the knife into the jar. Mayo is a vegetable, right? Feeling better, I smile. Trey, like Dad, can say and do something offbeat and lighten the heaviest sadness. Mouthful, Trey mumbles. One thing Alan really cares about is fencing. Captain of the state fencing championship team. That's right, he gulps milk from the carton. It's his whole life. My life's upside down. Why not Alan's? What if he loses rather than wins? You could take him, Trey. Bet you could. Not my fight. Trey takes another bite. You're good at sports. Great, even. Try. Really? Win your battle? Trey's blue eyes, so like Dad's, study me. You know what Dad would say. Yeah, personal responsibility. My heel tap taps. My arms shudder. Hands clench. I'm back in the headmaster's office, back in jail. Trey licks the mail from his fingers, chomps on the last piece of bread. Then I'll learn fencing. Trey chokes. What? I'll learn fencing. He belly laughs. Don't laugh, I shout. You in sports? You don't like sports. I'll learn. Coordination, speed, agility? You need them for sports. PlayStation doesn't count. I shove Trey. Rebalancing, his hand swipes and the milk falls to the floor. Trey shoves back. I clutch his waist. He pushes back, clasps me around my back. We wrestle. Our shoes slip. 
Trey's long leg sweeps behind my knees and I fall. My shirt soaks up the milk. Trey straddles me. Uncle! Trey always beats me wrestling. I relax, making him think I'm giving up. With strength I didn't know I had, I flip Trey. My knees are on the other side of him, pinning him. Hey! Trey arches. My body presses him down. Uncle, says Trey, but I don't let him up. Uncle, I don't let go. Grunting, Trey lifts up, grips, and turns me over like I'm a sack of potatoes. Dante, it's going to be okay. No, it won't. Defeated, I sit cross-legged, not caring about the spilled milk. Trey throws his hand over my shoulder. Baby brother, baby brother. I won't look at him. When Trey was five, I was three. Mom says Trey loved calling baby brother. Trey sighs. Problem is you don't have any game. Help me get some. How could I explain that even if it were impossible to, to defeat Alan, I wanted to try? I've never known anybody who fenced, except for middle st field students, people like Alan. You mean rich? We're rich enough for private school. Tuition isn't like giving millions for the gymnasium. That's why it's called Alan Davies Family Gymnasium. Alan, Middle Fields Alan, is Alan Davies the fourth. You're kidding me. Wish I was. You'll never beat Alan in his own game. Trey squeezes my shoulder and stands. I'm going to shower and change my clothes. I feel hopeless, trapped all over again. I try to stand and slip. My knee cracks on the linoleum. I won't cry out, won't complain. I can't beat the whole world, but I can beat Alan. I know I can. Just got to find another way. I unspool the paper towel, soak up the milk. Be cool. I'll find a way. I walk gingerly toward my room, hoping my pants won't drip on the carpet. The only good thing about the move is that Trey and me don't have to share a bedroom. We share a bathroom with connecting doors. I see Trey peering at his chin in the long mirror. He wishes he could shave. Dad didn't grow a beard until college. Still, Trey hopes. His hair, is, his hair wet is dark brown. Once it's dry, it'll billow in blonde waves. Shirtless, I see how strong he is. Muscles in his shoulders, arms, and stomach. He's the athlete, not me. Trey's head turns. He knows what I'm thinking. He shrugs helplessly. Trey's skin is like dad's. Mom, mine is like mom's. Brothers. Student at Middlefield Prep think we're funny. How can you be brothers? But it's Alan who punishes, who makes me being darker than my brother a crime. Despairingly, I gently close my bedroom door.